written in 1943 with lyrics by Abel Mirapol and music by Earl Robinson, the house I live in became a patriotic American anthem during World War II. Expressing ideals to which we still strive as a nation, the song was popularized by Frank Sinatra in a 10-minute short film made to oppose anti-Semitism and bigotry. This optimistic call for inclusivity has been covered by myriad artists, from Paul Robeson and Mahalia Jackson to Sam Cooke and Detroit's own living legend, Kim Weston. Performing The House I Live In for us this evening, please welcome Maurice Drawn, Kisma Jordan, Nicole Williams, and her 11-year-old daughter, Layla. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Michigan Community Service Commission Board Chair Robert Colt. What a great night. It's a great way to open the show. We are going to have a terrific evening. I thank everyone for being here and welcome you all to this tremendous Opera House. Isn't it a fabulous facility? A round of applause for this place. You know, when I was a kid, I had a chance to come here, and I, I remember being excited going home, saying to my mother, Mom, I was at 
the Detroit Opera House. Someday I want to be on stage. And my mother, very sensitive, said, you cannot sing. <laughs> so it's been a challenge, but we made it here tonight. The Michigan Community Service Commission is the state's lead agency on volunteerism. We proudly help communities and make a difference across the state. We do this as co conveners, connectors, and resource generators. We have four main areas that we focus on, and you may know them. AmeriCorps, Mentor Michigan, Disaster Preparedness, and Volunteerism, of course. We say we are the people that help people. We're excited tonight. We have a great show that can spotlight terrific volunteers. Each year, this event brings together so many people and allows us to highlight and celebrate the incredible things done here in Michigan and across the state. It really is an inspiration of hope and commitment to volunteerism. We want you to know how important this is for all of the people who are here and certainly our commission that works so hard. I'm again fortunate to be chair of a commission that's a great group of volunteers, commissioners appointed by the governor, who really care and serve throughout several areas of the state and have a wide variety of experience that they share. I would like, and uh, I know our house lights are down, but you can see them. If you are one of our commissioners, will you stand and be recognized? I know that you're here. Give them a round of applause for their service. And look, I also want to take a moment and recognize some of our lawmakers who are here. Congressman Mitchell, I saw at the reception. So many state lawmakers, representatives and, and senators and folks in elected office, all who support volunteerism here in the state. Will you also stand and be recognized now? Thank you. So we also want to sincerely thank all of our sponsors for their tremendous support, both for this evening and the ongoing impact they have on service and volunteerism across this state. We are very appreciative that General Motors is once again this event's lead sponsor. At General Motors, it is a core value to serve and improve the communities where their employees live and work. Since 2010, the GM CARES team has logged 360,000 volunteer hours, provided volunteer opportunities for more than 35,000 employees, and they have generated what is the equivalent of $8.7 million in value to nonprofits. Give General Motors a round of applause for that kind of commitment. <laughs> Beyond that, they've made incredible investments in, in grants focused on education, sustainable employment, neighborhood revitalization, and increased access to the arts and cultural institutions in Michigan. General Motors makes an incredible impact both here in Michigan and around the world. Again, we thank them for being our event sponsor. Now, in addition, yes, give them a round one more time. Now, in addition, I'm going to ask you to applaud again because uh, take a look at your programs and on the screen behind me, Take notice of all the businesses in our state that have taken the essential step to celebrate service and are our partners in this event and throughout the year. We want to thank all of our wonderful sponsoring organizations who've made a great impact on this special night so that 
outstanding volunteers can be on this stage. Give them a round of applause, our sponsors. Could you please stand and be recognized? If you're one of our sponsors, please stand up. <laughs> Terrific. We appreciate your support. Incredible sponsorship. And now, it is my pleasure to call to the stage one of our newest commissioners, serving as a representative of the first family. It's been a long tradition since the commission started to have a representative on the commission from the first family. Please help me in welcoming the daughter of Governor Gretchen Whitmer, East Lansing High School's Sherry Shrewsbury. I feel honored to be here this evening, and I appreciate the opportunity to serve on the, on the Michigan Community Service Commission. The commission is launching a youth volunteer movement across the state of Michigan. I look forward to being a part of the team that provides resources and support. One such resource is a new volunteer online platform called Interview. The software will help youth learn about service opportunities and explore their passions. It will also track their hours and create a service resume for job and college applications. My, my generation of youth are action-oriented and eager to invest our time and talent into the causes that we support. Interview has a real opportunity to generate long-lasting impact by helping youth along their service journey. If anyone in the audience would like to be a part of this movement, please contact the MCSC to learn about how you can be involved. Annually, the commission supports a poster contest requesting young artists throughout the state su to submit designs. Winning designs are used to promote the concept of volunteerism and inspire residents of Michigan to serve. This year, we had some fabulous entries and the finalists and winners are here with us this evening. Could you please join me with recognizing these youth? I have been fortunate I had the privilege to grow up watching my mother navigate the world as a dedicated public servant, always demonstrating to me and our family the value of giving back to the community and this wonderful state. She has a strong desire to build bridges and bring people together. These are the efforts that truly solve problems for people in Michigan. She sees volunteerism and service as essential balancing variables in this equation. They allow communities to identify what issues must be solved, and they shine a light on how to do it. She is a tireless, and ad she is a tireless advocate for helping those who are in need and the incredible people that join her in such work. I am so happy to welcome to the stage my mother, Governor Gretchen Whitmer. Thank you. Thank you, Sherry. Beautiful job. She was a little bit nervous, so I'm really proud. You know, it is a pleasure and an honor to be the 49th governor of this great state. And with being governor, thank you. With being governor, there are many challenges inherent to the job, but there are also many joys. And looking around this room, I am filled with inspiration and gratitude. And I appreciate the work that you do every single day. I had the opportunity to chat with a few of you, some who responded to a disaster in the Upper Peninsula, some who respond every single day to people with brain injury and the Hope Network, children who are working to feed others. It truly is an inspirational evening. And I want to thank all of you for the work that you do. I want to recognize. You can clap for yourselves, I think so. The Michigan Community Service Commission has spent more than 25 years as a fierce advocate for the people of Michigan. And I'm grateful, I'm grateful to have so many dedicated partners in this room, 
who are committed to building bridges, literally and figuratively. I am excited to continue the important work that you have done. We will take it forward together. And I want to thanks. I want to give my gratitude and my heartfelt thanks to all of the winners who are here today who've dedicated your lives to service. The greatest thing about this state are the people who call it home. We are incredibly lucky to have such an outstanding group of volunteers who selflessly work every single day to build a stronger mission, Michigan for everyone. We have a rich tradition of volunteerism in this state. More than 2.3 million Michiganders volunteer every year, and their service had an estimated economic value of more than $4.4 billion to our state. Now, growing up, I can tell you my parents instilled in me and my siblings the importance of serving your community and volunteering and giving back. They taught us to work hard and to do everything we can to help those in need. And I am grateful to look around this room and see so many people who share that value. I want to single out a couple of the great volunteers that we have here today. Our Youth Volunteers of the Year are Addie B Battle and Pearl Dascom. Addie and Pearl are 16-year-olds from Cass City. They've used their background in farming to raise livestock and poultry for food donations and created the Meeting the Need for Our Village, M-E-A-T-I-N-G, Meeting the Need. Our Senior Volunteer of the Year is Mildred Bond Johnson. Mildred is 84 years old and has been serving her community of Muskegon Heights. So there's a 68-year difference between those volunteers, I just acknowledge. She is, has been serving her community of Muskegon Heights and the surrounding area for more than 60 years. She's been a fierce advocate for kids' education and has spent a lifetime giving back to those in need. And the Governor George Romney Lifetime Achievement Award goes to Lloyd Royce. Lloyd joined Focus Hope, an organization that's goal is to overcome racism and poverty by providing education and training for those underrepresented minorities. At Focus Hope, Lloyd helped establish the Center for Advanced Technologies, of which he also became the executive dean. He remained with the program for more than 20 years. Thank you, Lloyd. Now these are but three examples of the many in this room, of people and organizations and businesses that have dedicated themselves to bettering our state. Because of their hard work and dedication, our communities are safer and our families healthier. I want to close with a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. He said, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing for others? The people here today have earned a great distinction for their volunteerism but our service isn't over. Every day, I want each and every one of us to ask ourselves and to encourage others to ask that question. What are we doing to help others? And I want you all to continue the phenomenal work that you are doing and to know that the people of Michigan are grateful for your service. Thank you. Have a wonderful evening with us tonight. Thanks, honey. Thank you, Governor. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the 2019 Governor's Service Awards. I'm Lloyd Jackson, Traffic Operations Director for News Radio 950 WWJ. Hopefully you got here on time around all those construction barrels. That's what we do, traffic on the eights. I am so excited to serve as your MC this evening. I've always had a special place in my heart for the Michigan Community Service Commission. I served as a commissioner, actually seeing firsthand the impact the commission can make by supporting communities. Your presence salutes the volunteer and service efforts of the people of our great state. This evening, we celebrate the volunteers and organizations who have gone above and beyond to make a difference in their communities and affected countless lives. 
Before we begin, everyone, please take a moment to silence your cell phones, but actually we encourage you to use those silence phones to take pictures and share highlights from tonight on social media by using the hashtag VolunteerMichigan. Helpful social media information is posted on the back of your program. Let Michigan know about our amazing celebration tonight. Now it's time to present the awards. We begin with the presentation of the Senior Volunteer of the Year Award. This award honors individuals aged 65 and older who have shared their wisdom and experience to better their community. They emanate compassion, selfless care, and bring patience to difficult situations. By refusing to submit to conventional expectations of aging, these heroes bring their talents and a lifetime of insight to tackle pressing challenges and help us explore what is possible. They are true change makers. Mary Ann Ryan has been saving lives with one selfless act of service at a time. Through her career as a registered nurse, Mary Ann has always acted as a voice for those who didn't always have one. She spent countless hours over the years volunteering with Hope, a low barrier shelter that acts as a way out of homelessness rather than a place of last resort. She has assisted in collecting donations, providing free health services, and encouraged others to volunteer. Grace LaValle at age 86 to serve persistently in supporting veterans at the DJ Jacobetti home in Marquette. She helps plan and execute events and makes it her priority to personally get to know every new member. She inspires others to serve and even mentors them and teaches them the needs of members. She continues to go above and beyond the call of duty and is an inspiration to everyone whom she comes in contact. Jelani Bush has dedicated her life to building a brighter future in her community of West Michigan. She has served in a diverse variety of causes, from protecting the environment to pressing issues such as food security within low-income families and struggling seniors. With more than 13,000 volunteer hours under her belt, she spent 15 years as a member of the Michigan Botanical Club, where she commits her time to educate the public on conservation of all natural resources. Carl Knopf has been committed to comforting comparable senior citizens who suffer from seclusion within nursing care facilities. He makes sure residents don't experience social isolation by making their days with him memorable. Carl visits facilities more than 20 hours a week. He brings a variety of board games and typically treats the residents to outings in the community. His big heart resonates with everyone he comes in contact with. Regina Mulchewski's passion for education shows in her exceptional commitment to enable young adults to become engaged within science education programs. Putting in 2,000 plus volunteer hours a year, she serves as a science coach, which she trains teachers in STEM concepts and demonstrations, along with obtaining grants to fund many exercises and events. She continues to inspire students to develop programs relative to her audiences. Mildred Bond Johnson has spent more than 60 years serving and advocating for her community. Her volunteer efforts have focused on supporting pressing issues of hunger and homelessness. She served as a long-term advocate for civil rights and equality. Additionally, Mildred has served as the director and mentor with the Snickers Youth Program, guiding young youth to life skills, development, and success. Ida McNichol commits every day to serving and protecting children who are of high risk in her community. She is a devoted volunteer for the Senior Corps Foster Grandparent Program, where she provides hands-on assistance to the youth. Haida offers one-on-one -on -one readings to enhance the children's motor skills, literacy, numbers, and self-esteem. Her service also extends to helping women who have experienced abuse and trauma by supplying them with the proper resources at emergency shelters. Haida has a true gift of selflessness and kindness. Joining the governor tonight to present the Senior Volunteer of the Year Award is Firekeepers in Blue Cross and Blue Shield. 
The honorees for Senior Volunteer of the Year are Jelani Bush, Mildred Bond Johnson, Grace Lavalle, Regina Mulchewski, Haida McNichols, and Marianne Ryan. Let's give a round of applause to the Senior Volunteer of the Year honoree. Our next award, the Outstanding Volunteer Program, acknowledges the transformational support an organization can provide to community life. Schools, faith-based organizations, mentoring programs, nonprofit organizations, and service clubs are potential nominees. Tonight, we have some outstanding winners. Joining the governor to present the awards are sponsors DTE Energy Foundation and Lake Trust Credit Union. The first recipient, Friends Indeed of Ypsilanti, has responded to unmet needs of low-income Washtenaw County residents for more than 35 years. Helping to stabilize families in crisis, volunteers help prevent utility shutoffs, manage medical issues, and provide access to work and medical appointments. More than 200 volunteers serve nearly 7,000 hours annually to help families lift themselves out of poverty. Give a Kid Projects is an all-volunteer group that works to meet the needs of families in Ingham, Eaton, and Clinton counties by providing coats, backpacks, gifts, and professional attire. Give a Kid Projects has been in existence for over 40 years, identifying needs of children and families, as well as mobilizing individuals and businesses to meet those needs. In their many years of service, Give a Kid Projects has brought together 5,000 community volunteers to serve 67,000 hours and collectively benefit more than 30,000 children. In 2018, flooding left the Houghton County community with millions of dollars in damages. The Portage Health Foundation sprang into action and immediately created its Flood with Love response to support crisis-based mental health services and provide emergency supplies for recovery. They supported the Volunteer Reception Center that engaged over 2,000 volunteers and provided more than 28,000 hours of service. The foundation also directly coordinated and paid for repair to homes, relocation of families, and helped mitigate public health risks, expanding expending rather over $2 million. The community and state owe the Portage Health Foundation a debt of gratitude. The Shelter, the Shelter Association of Washtenaw County has countless programs, initiatives, and housing solutions to assist individuals in ending their homelessness. One of these programs, Art Break Studio, allows individuals to tap into their creativity and gives voice to people experiencing homelessness through art expression. This outlet has added a new dimension of care and is a treasured activity. The studio has become an integral part of the shelter operations and helps those experiencing homelessness to have a little color in their lives.
The United Way of Genesee County builds the capacity of organizations and individuals to volunteer in their communities. Through Genesis Services, Genesee Services, the organization encourages individuals of any age to volunteer and create positive impact. Last year, Genesee Services engaged almost 5,000 volunteers in 14,000 hours of service to assist the surrounding community. United Way of Genesee County has made it one of their core objectives to recruit and support volunteers to make their community a better place. Let's give a round of applause to this year's volunteer organization honorees. Another round of applause for this year's volunteer organization honorees. The Volunteer of the Year Award is reserved for an individual who tirelessly labors, improving the lives of neighbors, friends, communities, or congregations. These volunteers do not necessarily have more time than the rest of us, but they have a, a surpassing amount of heart to serve. It was Lloyd Thomas who said, unselfish and notable acts are the most radiant pages in the biography of souls. We are so appreciative of their volunteer award winners. They inspire many of their stories, shine a light upon our soul. Let's take an in-depth look at these wonderful volunteers. I was born and raised in a small town in Michigan and I was raised with Midwest values. My dad was always out there helping others. He had carpenter skills and he was a skilled tradesman and anybody who needed help, he was always the first to, to be there. But wasn't necessarily told that you have to do this. It was just modeled from my parents that it's, it's just a way of life and that's what you do. You reach out and you help others. Two years ago, our Great Lakes Bay region area suffered a flood. I think one of the amazing things is how our community in Midland came together and rallied, but also as a nation, we had national volunteers come in. They helped us set up a long-term disaster recovery group. I would tell that individual who thinks that I'm standing here alone, I can't do anything, is that they have something to offer. and. What they can do is inspire others. You know, one person, you can make a difference and you should make a difference. Giving back to those in need is a form of meditation. You're making somebody else's life who isn't enjoying their days a little brighter. If the world all gave back to one another in a positive way, imagine how beautiful this world would really be. You know, you don't, you don't do this kind of stuff because you want everybody to praise you and put you on a pedestal or what have you. But the message of this award basically says that maybe what little good I'm doing out there in my own little world is making a difference and I'm impacting lives in a positive way. My name is Michelle Shepard, and I'm coordinator of the Michigan Ovarian Cancer Alliance's SPEAK program. SPEAK stands for Survivors Promoting Early Awareness and Knowledge. I, I say that I was raised in a very service-minded family. My dad was still an active volunteer when he died at 84. I'm really proud of the work that I do, but I'm really grateful that I'm able to do the work. I volunteer with girls who wake up every day to face chronic ovarian cancer. 
and they do it with grace. And so I'm just fortunate that I can volunteer. Every person possesses special skills or gifts or talents that could be used to lift other people up. I believe the best way for us to rejoice in our blessings is to share them with those in need. I hear giving back a lot, but I kind of think of it as giving for to our students. A lot of it is just giving them the exposure so that they can explore some new activity, some new science activity, and decide whether or not they want to move forward with a career. It's mostly about the students. But the way our program works is that each student comes into our class in a different place. So I'm most proud that when I do uh, my data analysis that I can actually say that I'm advancing every student. I never really thought this was likely, that I would be named Volunteer of the Year. We're actually saying that this program that we've started, we're actually recognizing that it's actually benefiting our youth, and this is recognition of that. Join the governor on stage to present the Volunteer of the Year Award. Our sponsor is Jackson National Life and Consumers Energy. The Volunteers of the Year are Ann Fillmore, Kimberly Ismail. Richard Stringfield. And Michelle Shepard. Let's give a round of applause to our Volunteer of the Year honoree. Now please welcome back to the stage, Mike Ellison. Good evening. Detroit's poet laureate, prolific author, publisher, esteemed godmother of African-American poetry, and nonagenarian, Naomi Long Madgett writes. You can clap it up for Miss Madgett. It was only when I gave myself away that I began to find myself. Service, I have learned, is where true happiness lies. Like the gracious Naomi Long Magid, the fearless Rochelle Riley has heeded the call to serve in several capacities throughout her life and distinguished career. She remains a consistent, strident voice for the people. The author, essayist, blogger, and arts advocate spent nearly a quarter century as a columnist most notably for the Detroit Free Press, as most of you know, where her columns were part of a 2009 Pulitzer Prize winning entry for local reporting. Enshrined in the Michigan Journalism Hall of Fame and the North Carolina Media and Journalism Hall of Fame, her many, and I do mean many, many individual accolades include just a few, two national headliner awards for best local column writing, the 2017 Ida B. Wells Award from the National Association of black journalists, the Will Rogers Award from the National Society of Newspaper Columnists for her community service, the 2017 Eugene C. Pullum Editorial Fellowship, and the 2018 Lifetime Achievement Award from the Society of Professional Journalists. Co-founder of Letters to Black Girls, who aims to empower young black girls by providing words of support and encouragement from women, Rochelle is also the proud author of The Burden, African Americans and the Enduring Impact of Slavery, and the forthcoming That They Lived, 
20 African Americans who changed the world. And as many of you know, she now serves as the Director of Arts and Culture for the City of Detroit. Will you please, absolutely. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, you know you're bad when you get that kind of applause and we didn't even get to the introduction yet. That being said, please join me in welcoming the fearless, the tireless, the selfless, the incredible and phenomenal 2009 Spirit of Hope Award winner, Rochelle Riley. Hello again. <laughs> First, I'd like to say thank you so much for that incredible honor. First, they said, we're so glad you worked. Now we're going to let you work some more. <laughs> so I'm glad to now become your MC for a little part of the program. The last time I took this stage as an MC was a long time ago under a different governor, and I'm glad to be back. It was Shirley Chisholm who said, service is the rent we pay for the privilege of living on this earth. I believe service is something the Lord made for us to stay on this earth. Years ago, I served as the MC for these awards and it is my honor to come back to introduce the outstanding National Service Award. National Service programs such as AmeriCorps, AmeriCorps VISTA, and Senior Corps leverage resources, engage volunteers, build infrastructure, and provide results-driven service. This award honors high-quality national service programs that generate significant impact in communities. Joining the governor on stage to present the Outstanding National Service Program Award are sponsors Spectrum Health and Priority Health. The Family Literacy AmeriCorps program partners with local schools in the greater Grand Rapids area to break the generational cycle of low literacy. AmeriCorps members assist parents to improve their own language and literacy skills and more effectively engage with their children's education. The program offers one-on-one -on -one tutoring, employment-based classes, and literacy courses. This AmeriCare program not only strengthens family literacy, but it also bolsters the local economy, civic engagement, and the educational systems of Western Michigan. The Pathways to Employment AmeriCorps VISTA program is administered by the Michigan Nonprofit Association. It promotes and strengthens community building initiatives that focus upon education and economic opportunity. The 32 AmeriCorps VISTA members serve with nonprofit organizations and institutions of higher education throughout the state. The VISTA members support organizations to implement career awareness and employability skills. The program has also proven exceptional at preparing its members to be future nonprofit leaders and understand how to make lasting impact. The Michigan, the Michigan Education Corps is an initiative of Hope Network. It utilizes 110 AmeriCorps members to provide language, literacy, and math-rich supplemental instruction in schools across Michigan. Launched in 2012 with just four elementary schools, Michigan Education Corps has grown to serve more than 3,000 children annually in 80 schools across the preschool, elementary, and middle school levels. About 95 percent 
About 95% of the students who receive interventions exceeded the target growth rates for same grade peers. AmeriCorps members do so much more than teach children. They are a constant in their lives and show them that anything is possible. Let's give a round of applause to our National Service Award program winners. I felt incredibly blessed earlier this year to have received the Voices for National Service Award in Washington, D.C. I have been privileged to see AmeriCorps members in action firsthand. They choose to give a year, a whole year, of their life in service and only receive a small living stipend in return. Their passion is contagious. You find yourself wanting to serve alongside them. It is hard to believe that it has been 25 years since President Clinton started AmeriCorps. Let's watch this celebration of a remarkable milestone. 25 years ago, bound by a legacy of service, we came together to focus on a singular idea, that by working together, we would harness our skills and talents to make a difference in people's lives. We knew that by investing in a child's future, we would open a world of endless possibility. That after hurricane force winds destroyed our cities and our towns, we would help to rebuild. That connecting people with jobs and education would lead to stronger families and healthier communities. That providing resources to nonprofits that share in our mission would strengthen their work and help them grow and that the simple act of being a friend or a companion would help a senior live an independent life. It was an idea that resonated and grew. Today, there are some 300,000 AmeriCorps and Senior Corps volunteers working side by side with teachers, nonprofits, police departments, community leaders, park rangers, and veterans to educate rebuild, protect, and grow communities all across our country. One idea, countless acts of service, and a future with infinite possibilities. We now invite AmeriCorps alum and members in the audience to stand and be recognized as we all salute your service. Let's give them a big round of applause. The Detroit Children's Choir uses the power of choral music to build an inclusive community of creative, confident, and focused youth. They have been the featured choir for a variety of community events and have performed with numerous artists, including Detroit's own Big Sean. Tonight, they are performing I'll Make the Difference, accompanied by harpist Maurice Drawn. Please put your hands together for the Detroit Children's Choir. Can make a difference. 
against all odds. I can live to share my love with others. Yes, I will make a difference. I will make it take my hand as we make this journey across the Take my hand as we make this journey across the land. I have the courage to keep going on, and I have the faith. strength to keep going on. I can make a difference. Yes, I
What a beautiful sound. Give it up for the youth choir once more. Our next series of awards all support youth, whether honoring individuals who do incredible work in that arena or honoring youth volunteers themselves. First, we have the Mentor of the Year Award, which recognizes individuals who have made a significant difference in the lives of youth through mentoring. Mentors generate belief in youth, a belief in themselves, a belief that hard work matters, that school matters, a belief that they matter. Mentors work with youth to identify and pursue what they want, encouraging them to cast off the restraints of the impossible. Day after day, mentors provide unwavering support and change lives through this process. This video details their powerful mentoring stories. Charles Johnson's mission is to elevate the lives of youth in the city of Detroit one day at a time. He has served as a mentor with Winning Futures for nearly nine years, helping to inspire and prepare youth to become successful through life skills development and workforce preparation. As an alumnus of Detroit Public Schools, Charles has always made it his passion to ensure that the youth have an opportunity for growth. Grant Smith serves as the president of Waterford Youth Assistance, where he recruits youth mentors and helps to strengthen families. Grant's dedication to being a leader is truly unmatched. His team members applaud his hard work and sleepless efforts. He began mentoring one young man and has supported him to play sports, attend career exploration programs, and achieve academically. Grant's compassion for mentoring one young man grew to supporting an entire mentoring program and making a difference for Oakland County youth. Donald Ferguson is the program coordinator for 100 Black Men of Greater Detroit that has a mission to help young African-American men succeed after graduating high school. His main goal is to prepare them for their future. He mentors them through programs that assist in public speaking and education. Donald's selfless efforts have not only had a lasting impact on the young men that he mentored, but also on the Detroit community. Stacey Zotkovich has served more than 10,000 hours to mentor, inspire, and empower young women. The former Mrs. Michigan advocates for anti-bullying and suicide prevention by mentoring with a focus on self-identity and mindfulness. Stacy has also volunteered as a Girls on the Run coach, providing elementary school girls mental, fundamental, and physical skills utilized in everyday life. She uses her amazing optimism and passion to support others to identify how they can make a difference. Joining the governor on stage to present the Mentor of the Year Awards are sponsors Comcast and Dean Transportation. The winners for Mentor of the Year Award are Stacy Zadkovich. Charles Johnson. Donald Ferguson. and Grant Smith. Let's give these inspiring mentors of the year a round of applause. The Education Service Leader Award honors schools, colleges, universities, and other organizations that support youth by ensuring resources are accessible before and during their school years. In addition, their organizations believe that youth voice is essential to solving community challenges. 
If youth are engaged in volunteerism and philanthropy early, they will become lifelong servants of their communities. Join the governor on stage to recognize the Education Service Leader honorees, our sponsors, Skillman Foundation and Alma Family Practice. Let's now meet our Education Service Leaders. Detroit Public Television is committed to educating Southeast Michigan's children. They launched Detroit PBS Kids, a 24-hour, 24-7 channel dedicated to free and accessible education children's programming. Other educational opportunities include <laughs> virtual field trips and locations like the Detroit Zoo and the Detroit Institute of Arts. Support K-12 education with learning opportunities outside the classroom. All programs and initiatives are based on strong engagement with parents, educators, and community stakeholders. Tonight, we are pleased to have Daniel Tiger join us on stage. <laughs> Daniel Tiger's Neighborhood is an Emmy-winning PBS Kids series from Mr. Rogers. Daniel, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Detroit Pal in partnership with the Detroit Police Department, runs one of the largest inner city after school programs in the country with over 15,000 participants. It builds character in young people through athletic, academic, and leadership development initiatives. Collectively, it's 2,600 volunteers provide over 200,000 hours, annual hours, supporting enrichment program for youth and their families. These programs include robotics, financial literacy, broadcasting, journalism, and workforce development. Detroit PAL has positively impacted the lives of thousands of Detroit youth and helps prepare them to be successful in life. Grand Blaine Community Schools are engaging students to make a difference in their community. Their schools choose to adopt the Positivity Project to help students focus on relationships and cultivating a mindset of others over self. These empowered students develop and implement creative solutions that make a positive impact upon their most pressing community issues. Grand Blank students are leaders in making a difference in their community as they strive to bring awareness of helping others through their service projects. We are pleased the superintendent of schools was able to be here this evening to receive the award. <laughs> Wayne County Community College District provides opportunities for youth to increase their confidence and pursue college by creating a positive classroom atmosphere in college experience. In partnership with the Lawn Academy, students are provided a free college immersion opportunity. The program develops skills and proficiency for youths ages 11 through 19 in areas of automotive technology, global logistics, marketing, entrepreneurialism, and civic responsibility. Youth are matched with industry leaders and provide an opportunity that would not have been possible without the assistance of Wayne County Community District. Let's give our Educational Leaders of the Year a round of applause. The Youth Volunteer of the Year Award honors young people committed to volunteerism. Their service demonstrates compassion as they relentlessly pursue the betterment of their communities. It is imperative that society understands an essential truth. We need all of the energy, imagination, and talent that youth have to offer. Youth across our state are choosing to drive local, state, and global change. Their efforts inspire few to become many, uniting 
and service. As you watch the video, you will be amazed by their accomplishments. I was five years old when I first started feeding the homeless. It was after my dad died. We started coming down. That's when I started thinking, they don't really have as much as we do, so we do have to help them. The Amish Foundation is a nonprofit, and we've raised over $90,000. We usually go and buy food, clothes, hygiene, snacks, water, anything they really need. Furry Friends is right under the Amish Foundation. It's where I go either to Detroit Mount Police or Michigan Main Society and donate food. I'm really proud to say that we're still coming here after nine years, and I don't want to stop. I hope that from me winning this award will inspire other kids or adults to go and help in their own communities. Meeting the need for our village started with four friends volunteering at the food pantry, raising chickens. It just kind of spread word of mouth. We've grown to um, reaching out to about 270 youth. We have made a $56,000 impact in the community through 10,000 pounds of meat, 200 dozen eggs, and 2,000 gallons of milk. My biggest goal would be just really focusing on like food equity and making sure that everyone has access to the same quality and quantity of food. I focus a lot on the youth empowerment and supporting local agriculture aspects of the project. But winning this award for me is really encouraging because this project is something that I'm very passionate about. Also, it allows other youth to see that they can have an impact on their community as well. I really hope that the youth surrounding Coral and I see that we've been able to do this and that they can do the same. Anyone can do it if they set their minds to it. The STEAM Connection is an organization that I started earlier this year to bring accessible and affordable STEM education to kids all over the world. I think art is a really important aspect of STEM. Every Kid Gets a Robot is a robot that I invented earlier this year that cost $18.95. Educational robots can be so expensive, they can cost upwards of $400, $500. I wanted to create something that kids could learn about electrical engineering, they could learn about mechanical engineering, and they could also learn about computer science through programming. It's gone to a lot of kids all over the United States and it's been really cool to see the kids like super excited about assembling those robots and learning how to create their own futures through STEAM education. And so I've been putting on different STEAM classes for kids to educate them on things like soldering, things like robotics, wiring a robot, they learn about electrical components, and we learn more about 3D printing. I don't see a lot of STEAM representation in many awards across the United States and to see that representation was really important to me. I'm a volunteer with Gift of Life Michigan. My eighth grade English teacher, Ms. Costello, she used to tell me and all of her students about her need for a kidney transplant and that really inspired me to start doing some research of my own. I came to learn about how many people need organ donations and the number of people that unfortunately pass away each day from not getting the organs in time. When I talked to my peers about this, I realized that they really had no idea about it. That inspired me to start Gift Date Lives, which increases awareness of organ donation. My biggest goal with Gift Date Lives would be for there be some sort of legislation in place where all students throughout the United States would have a mandatory education curriculum about organ donation, and hopefully with that, would be able to create a world where no one has to wait eight to 10 years for a transplant. Winning the Youth Volunteer Award has really meant a lot to me and really signifies to me that all the work I've done with Gifted Lives is heading in the right direction. And I'm excited to see where Gifted Lives goes in the future. I'm most passionate about black people feeling safe, not only in their workspaces, but in places that they live. Building community where people can feel authentic. I went to a predominantly black high school. When I went to Michigan State, which is not predominantly black, it's a predominantly white university. 
you can be really uncomfortable where you're sitting in classes or maybe working with people that don't look like you. And I knew in that you can sometimes like lose yourself and lose your identity. When moving back home, I was like, I never want to feel what I felt in college. I don't want to feel that in my hometown. We started Muskegee Young Black Professionals in March of 2017. We have socials every month. People just come, they're able to exchange business cards with one another, or just talk about current events that's happening in the area or in the country. For somebody to nominate me for this is very, very humbling. And I'm extremely, extremely grateful. Joining the governor on stage to present the Youth Volunteer of the Year Awards are Meyer and C.S. Mott Foundation. The winners for Youth Volunteer of the Year, Eddie Battle and Pearl Daskamp. Jocelyn Hines. Danielle Boyer. Emma Eimers. and Amug Gowda. Let's give our youth volunteers a round of applause. Ballet Edge Detroit, under the artistic direction of Angel Lavery, takes the classic art form of ballet and applies bold and creative interpretations. Ballet Edge Detroit is made up of dancers who are also students, teachers, and young professionals. Their mission is proudly representing the city of Detroit as a powerhouse in the performing arts. Forget it, he's nervous, but on the surface he looks calm and ready to drop palms. But he keeps on forgetting what he wrote down. The whole crowd goes so loud, he opens his mouth, but the words won't come out. He's choking how everybody's choking now. The clocks run out. Do not miss your chance to blow This opportunity comes once in a lifetime 
Individuals and nonprofit organizations do amazing work to improve communities and support people. And they deserve every recognition. However, businesses and corporations too play a critical role in bettering communities. And tonight we recognize their work with the Corporate Community Leader Award. This award honors outstanding corporate citizenship exemplified by various and diverse community giving. The following corporate community leaders have become a force for good in Michigan communities. Double Tree by Hilton. Volunteers take enormous pride in the service of their community of Port Huron. Team members spend a substantial amount of time performing monthly blight elimination, hosting a recycling competition for the schools, and volunteering with their local Humane Society and Habitat for Humanity. Their efforts have received global notice. Port Huron's Doubletree staff have received the most Spirit of Care awards across the Americas of all their locations. This hotel has left a lasting impression by working hard to share their love for bettering the community. Trinseo, located in Midland in Auburn Hills, is dedicated to producing lasting change by encouraging employee volunt volunteerism. The company's Global Volunteer Days program has grown from a two-week event to a month-long occasion. Last year, Trinseo employees served more than 2,500 volunteer hours working in food kitchens, supporting community gardens, environmental projects, and focused reading time with students. For their support of local communities, they've received the distinction of being named United Way of Midlands County's 2017 Caring Community of the Year. <laughs> Spectrum Health encourages its employees to explore their passions and expertise by making a meaningful impact. Employees are offered time off to invest in community efforts and are also provided coordinated volunteer opportunities. Teaming up with United Way, Spectrum Health volunteers have supported a variety of nonprofits as they strive to build healthier families and connect community members to key resources. On top of these employee volunteerism efforts, their Healthier Communities Initiative has delivered over $6 million showcasing the substantial investment Spectrum Health has made in West Michigan over the past 22 years. <laughs> BASF strives to create a substantial future. They approach this challenge by fostering a strong sense of community through volunteering, educational outreach, and charitable giving. Employees engage in volunteerism projects working to improve the Earth's environment and helping students imagine the possibilities that chemistry offers for their future. In addition, employees are very willing to roll up their sleeves and get things done. For the past six years, over 200 of their volunteers have teamed up with Life Remodeled to revitalize the Durfee Middle School, the Duffy, the Dufry Middle School area. <laughs> Through sustainability, efforts, the building has been repurposed as the Innovation Center to house nonprofits that serve children and families. BASF employees feel it's a privilege to contribute to the important work of its partners and are inspired by the impact it's generated. DTE Energy's company-wide commitment to volunteerism connects employees to hundreds of organizations furthering their respective missions and serving communities. Creating a culture of volunteering has always been a priority for the company. Many of these volunteer opportunities enable employees to use their unique professional skill sets to make a difference. Behind the work of their carefree force team and the eagerness of their employees to make a difference, 2018 showed they are truly a force for good. In total, DTE employees volunteered more than 89,000 hours, helping over 820 nonprofits, and this reached an estimated value of $6 million in in-kind services. 
Over half of DTE's workforce has taken time out of their lives to better their communities, with thousands of employees spread throughout the state and beyond, and combined with the continued empowerment from leadership, the result of DTE's volunteerism has produced substantial impact. Joining the governor on stage to present the award is the Council of Michigan Foundations. <laughs> Through service, Bosch Associates strive to enhance the community in which they live, work, and learn. In particular, they strive to create a substantial environment for the future and engage youth in STEM-based experiences. Bosch Associates help students explore hands-on opportunities and receive mentorship. They also serve with the Food Bank, Habitat for Humanity, and other local initiatives. Since 2011, the Bosch Community Fund has awarded more than $22 million in grants to various organizations and educational institutions. But at the core of all its social efforts are the associates. They continue to believe and build upon the legacy of their founder, Robert Bosch. A recent survey found that 75% of Bosch employees believe social responsibility to be important. And it shows, one associate commented, Mr. Bosch was passionate about community, people, and a variety of social causes. It was his spirit of innovation and generosity that propelled the company forward, and it is why I joined the team. In keeping with that spirit, it's a great honor for us to have Mike Musetti, president of Bosch North America, join the governor on stage this evening. His attendance demonstrates his strong commitment to Bosch Associates in their quest to pay it forward in communities. Please welcome actor, producer, singer, songwriter, and soon to make her Broadway debut, Detroit native, Yana Perot. Imagine there's no heaven It's easy if you try No hell below us Above us only sky Imagine all the Imagine there's no countries It isn't hard to do Nothing to kill or die for And no religion to Sharing all the world oh, 
This next award honors individuals that have demonstrated a lifetime of outstanding civic and charitable responsibility to a community or the state. Uniformly, these individuals have tirelessly given, transformed lives, and continually shown an unwavering dedication to making a difference. Let's welcome Miriam Nolan, the Executive Director of the Southeast Michigan Community Foundation, who will introduce the first recipient, Alan D. Gilmore. It's a wonderful opportunity to share the story of Alan D. Gilmore. This man has made significant contributions to business, the nonprofit community, academia, and the civil rights of LGBTQ community. Alan is a beloved leader known for his compassion, grace, and warmth. He has indelible, incredible wit and a self-deprecating humor. He seems to always have the right short quip for every occasion, a person who draws people in and puts them at ease. Now, Alan will tell you he grew up on a dairy farm in a small Vermont town. He spent long hours with his father in the hay fields and during one of those particularly long and hot days, decided farming was not for him. Instead, he wanted to be a lawyer. Why? because lawyers get to work inside, wear nice clothes, and avoid the things you accidentally step in on farms. <laughs> he went on to receive his BA in economics from Harvard and earned an MBA from the University of Michigan. Right after graduation, he was recruited by the big three, ultimately choosing the Ford Motor Company. Allen cultivated a career at Ford for over 34 years eventually serving as CFO and vice chairman before retiring in 1995. Well, kind of. Instead of relaxing, he became chairman of the Henry Ford Health System and served on numerous Fortune 500 boards. If that wasn't enough, in 2002, Bill Ford Jr. asked Allen to officially come out of retirement and return to the Ford Motor Company as CFO and vice chairman. Of course, he did it. In 2005, Alan retired for a second time. Well, kind of, because in 2010, Wayne State asked if he would serve as their president, which he held through the year 2013. Alan once stated that what makes a university great is when its mission is to educate and spread outside the campus grounds. While uh, he was president, he led the institution to do precisely that. He focused on revitalizing Midtown. He assisted Wayne State's transition from a primarily commuter school to one with campus housing. He saw the benefit of his students becoming part of the local community and in the economic shift in this great uh, city. He increased student retention, enhanced graduation rates, and he helped raise more than $200 million for the university's capital campaign. Alan was my boss when he became chairman of the Community Foundation in 2006. What a pleasure it is to have him as a boss. You learn every day from his wise leadership. I remember in 2006, Alan said, you know, the Community Foundation ought to help diversify the regional economy. I'm thinking, what a crazy thought. I'm not sure how he knew that he was gonna be so accurate about what happened with the 2008 economic downturn. 
but the Community Foundation did develop the new economy initiative with his help, and now our $100 million in grants that we have placed around this region have had a $2.9 billion economic impact, thanks to Alan. I want to thank Alan and Eric Jurgens for founding the Gilmore Jurgens Fund, which over the last 24 years has given dozens and dozens of grants to organizations around this region and the state. Alan and Eric together have been powerful advocates to ensure the civil rights of the LGBTQ community in the corporate world and beyond. The Affirmation Center in Ferndale is named after them for their recognition of the key role in the capital campaign. Alan's been the driving force behind the Hope Fund of the Community Foundation, one of the largest funder and advocates of the LGBTQ community in Southeast Michigan and around the country. Recently, Alan mused, in the 50 years since Stonewall, we old people look back and think of the enormous progress we've made. The younger people look back and think Enorm enormous progress needs to be made. Both are right. In a recent Forbes article, which commented on Alan's impact, they said throughout his, excuse me, throughout his career, even in the C-suite of a great American corporation, Gilmore was always watching, listening, and absorbing. He liked to make a difference without making much noise, even as he li lived through a cultural revolution. In June, Alan celebrated his 85th birthday. Reflecting, he said, well, I told Eric what it should say on my tombstone. He did his damnedest. Alan, this room is full of people that appreciate you. We can confirm that you did your damnedest. This community, this state, this world, we owe you a debt of gratitude. It is my great pleasure to introduce my friend, great philanthropist, generous person to everyone, Alan D. Gilmore. Joining the governor on stage to present the award is Ford Motor Company. And now, please welcome to the stage, Ron Hall, Jr., President and CEO of Bridgewater Interiors, to introduce Dr. William F. Picard. Thank you. Good evening. William F. Picard was nine years old when he moved from Florida to Flint, Michigan. His parents worked on the assembly line at General Motors providing him his first glimpse of the automotive world. As so often happens with new school children to a community, he struggled initially and felt outcast. It was an English teacher that encouraged him to work through those obstacles and begin to fulfill his vast potential. Dr. Picard considered this teacher his first mentor and the person who introduced him to the importance of helping others achieve their best. He went on to earn an associate's degree from Flint Mott College, a bachelor's degree from Western Michigan University, a master's degree from the University of Michigan, and a PhD in psychology from Ohio State University. An especially important part of this story, one that he talks about often, uh, and he says enabled uh, the many incredible gifts of service that he would later provide to our community is one of three young men 
meeting at Western Michigan during those undergraduate days. Dr. Picard, Dennis Archer, and my father, Ron Hall, met and became friends while students at Western. The three were bonded into brotherhood through their fraternity, Alpha Phi Alpha, which created a valued social network and place of refuge on that 1960s predominantly white campus. The three were ambitious from the start, not only in terms of charting their respective paths, but also in terms of bringing others along with them. Their trajectory of overwhelming success and accomplishment partially happened because they were able to frequently depend and lean on each other. As Dr. Picard tells the story when he and Mr. Archer were college roommates, they said, let's do something so that the next generation can see what happens when brothers come together, stay together, work together, pray together, lose together, and win together. Half a, half a century later, thanks to Dr. Picard's over $3 million gift, a residence hall has been named in honor of that trio. It is Dr. Picard's hope that when Western Michigan University students and others hear their story, they will understand that anybody from anywhere can do anything. After graduating from Western, Dr. Picard started his career in Cleveland, Ohio at the Urban League and later became the executive director of the NAACP chapter in that city. And after a series of other similar positions began the work in serial entrepreneurship that would largely define his career. A chance meeting with a corporate executive from the McDonald's Corporation led to an ownership opportunity of several restaurant franchises with that firm. This experience led him with the counsel of Henry Ford II to invest in racial minority owned firms that produce automotive parts. He created the Global Automotive Alliance, one of the country's leading racial minority owned companies and a chief supplier to General Motors Corporation, Ford Motor Company, and Fiat Chrysler Automobiles. His now 47 year entrepreneurial career has produced a bounty of successes including co-managing partner of MGM Grand Detroit Casino, CEO of Bear Management Company, and co-owner of five black-owned, iconic newspapers in cities around the country. Dr. Bacar measures his success by numbers, not the money he has earned, but by the number of people he has taught, mentored, and supported. Each one reach one and teach one are words that inspire him, and I know from personal experience are a, per a frequent refrain. He's written a book detailing key principles of successful entrepreneurship and spends time teaching others about business startups. Dr. Picard views these as essential avenues to share his success and give back by sharing his insights and story. He said, it is my way of saying that whatever I have done, you can do it too. It doesn't matter who you are, blue collar worker, an MBA grad, a new business owner, or a student working nights to pay your way through school. You have the ability to make it happen. His vast service includes serving on multiple boards to help nonprofits and universities make impact. In 1982, he was appointed by President Ronald Reagan to be the first chairman of the African Development Foundation. In 1990, President George H.W. Bush appointed him to the National Advisory Committee on Trade Policy Negotiations. Dr. Picard's philanthropic endeavors are numerous and include seven-figure donations to each of the Charles H. Wright Museum for African American History the National Museum of African American History and Culture in Washington, D.C., the Motown Historical Museum, and the aforementioned Western Michigan University. He's also donated generously to the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, Wayne State University, the Wayne County Community College District, and many others. 
I am one of the many, many business persons in this community and the generation behind Bill Picard, who owe him immeasurably for valuable guidance and support throughout our careers. He was my father's best friend, but also, as dad said many times, his most important mentor in life. I could not be more pleased to introduce him here tonight and to be the first person to congratulate him for receiving this wonderful recognition. Doc, please come to the stage and allow us to thank you for the tremendous gift of service you have provided over many years in the state of Michigan. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. William F. Picard. Joining the governor on stage to recognize Dr. Picard is Deloitte. The Governor George Romney Lifetime Achievement Award honors an individual who has shown a lifelong commitment to community involvement and volunteerism. And we close this evening by honoring one very special volunteer. This award is to honor an individual who has selflessly volunteered countless hours, an individual who has personally done the long, hard, often thankless work and made a tremendous impact. Tonight, we honor Lloyd Royce. <laughs> Lloyd Edwin Armin Royce had a long and distinguished 36-year career with General Motors, rising through the ranks from engineer to the role of president of General Motors Corporation. Since retiring, Lloyd has been the gold standard for community involvement, volunteering with Focus Hope, a nonprofit battling racism and poverty through education and training for underrepresented minorities. Over nearly 30 years with Focus Hope, Lloyd helped establish the Center for Advanced Technologies and raised over $184 million for capital campaigns. For Lloyd, the goal was never on the money raised, but rather what the money could do, the decades of lives it would change. Lloyd has shared his time, talent, and treasure, serving on numerous boards, including the Detroit Symphony Orchestra, Cranbrook Schools, and as a trustee of Lawrence Technological University. He was named 1997's Michiganian of the Year by the Detroit News, and most recently, he was recognized for the Hero of Hope Award from Focus Hope. We ask a few of the nonprofits that he has supported to share their service story of Lloyd E. Royce. Mr. Royce started with Focus Hope years and years ago. He was here for approximately 30 years as the volunteer extraordinaire. He actually became the dean of the Center for Advanced Technologies after his retirement from General Motors. Mart Harris, but he was one of the uh, longtime friend of mine. Mart now is about 95, I guess. He's still living. And so he said, well, you need to come down there and see what Father Cunningham's going to do. You'd love what they're going to do again. And so we came down and spent the day here at Focus Hope, just touring the facilities. I became interested. There were quite a few of us that came for no salary. His presence here has resonated because we have engineers who come back and talk about what getting an engineering degree from Focus Hope has meant for them. That impact on the lives that he changed is so great and goes on for decades. At Focus Hope, Lloyd Royce will always be a part of our family. Lloyd has um, always been a leader in this community, and whatever he touches, he touches with his own spirit and uh, sense of commitment and loyalty, and he has uh, 
taken care of and nurtured many organizations. It's thanks to the leadership of people like Lloyd and Lloyd specifically that we have Orchestra Hall here in our community. He's uh, certainly helped the Detroit Symphony Orchestra in so many ways. I think this is an amazing opportunity for us all to say thank you, Lloyd, for everything you've done for so many people. Mr. Royce is the leader who perpetuated excellence and moved us forward in that direction. He's a visionary, not only for Lawrence Tech, but his influence is all over this area. The Board of Trustees unanimously approved that the newest building on campus be named after him. The Royces have been members here for over 50 years. I believe his generosity is born out of his faith. But he has a deep and abiding faith, and he believes that that faith calls him to make a difference in the world. As I look back at all of the things he's been involved with over his lifetime, I can't even begin to comprehend how many thousands of people uh, that his generosity and his hard work have touched. So it's one of the things as we were growing up that you had to make sure that you're, uh, you're taking care of not just yourself, but anybody else you can. Please join the Governor and General Motors in welcoming Lloyd E. Royce to the stage to thank him for his service. What incredible stories. We now ask our other lifetime honorees to join Mr. Royce on stage in celebration of all of their accomplishments. What a wonderful evening this has been. Don't you agree? Honoring service and volunteerism. On behalf of Governor Whitmer and the Michigan Community Service Commission, we thank all of our honorees for their exceptional service and volunteerism. We leave tonight better for hearing your stories. We leave inspired to do more. And now, welcome back to the stage to close out the evening, nationally renowned recording artist Mike Ellison with master drummer Chi Amin-Ra. Are you all inspired this evening? The exemplary people that we've honored this evening remind us that we can all serve and that true happiness does lie in our service. Happiness is something that we all must fight for as compassionate warriors who lead with love. And so with that said, we close tonight with our signature song called Warrior's Rhythm. Now, there's an African proverb that says, if you wanna go fast, go alone. If you wanna go far, go together. Tonight, we're gonna move in unison and do something we've never done at the GSAs. I need all of you who can to please stand. All of you who can, please stand. In the back, up top, and not only do I want you to stand, I want you to come out of your seat, out of the aisles, and come up here to the front. 
I want all of you to come to the front. We want to connect with you and you connect with us. I see y'all looking at me like I'm crazy. Come on, 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 come on. Don't be the one. I'll stay right here the whole time until you two come right here up front. Let's fill it in. Everybody. Everybody. Keep coming, keep coming. We will not go until we have this whole mosh pit full. Now, we're not going to mosh out, I promise. There will not be any injuries tonight. Let's get a little bit closer, get to know each other, and get to know us. Where's the rest of our family? They can come out on stage, too. Now, as everybody is making their way to the front, if you would all be so kind, please take your right hand and hold it high in the sky like this. Now, let's make that one finger, one thumb. And in the spirit of the late, great Bob Marley, somebody say one love. Everybody say one love. Now, I'm going to take you back to my country of birth called Ethiopia. And in Ethiopia, we have a culture called Tigrenya. And in Tigrenya, we normally dance in circles, but tonight we're just going to go side to side like this. OK? Now, if you smooth like Chi and Ross Mikey C, you put your shoulders into it like this. Then you got to look away real slick like somebody called your name. Now we add the chant from the Amhara culture for unity like this. Say Yaho. Say Yaho. Come on, Yaho. We say Yaho. 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 Let's move. Let's move. Let's go. Let's move. Let's go. Let's do it. This is a rhythm, a warrior's rhythm, victorious rhythm, a glorious rhythm. Say Yaho. Say Yaho. You hear it, you feel it. It's there in the spirit. It's there in the lyric. Don't ever compare it. Say Yaho. Say Yaho. Don't be in the cradle, defeating the labels of people are able to eat at the table. Say Yaho.
pick it up, pick it up, pick it up, pick it up. Uh huh, uh huh. Say one love, say one love. We need more love, don't we? Let's make the whole city, the whole state hear us with one loud voice. One more time, put that one love high in the sky. Service is, service is true happiness when we love and serve each other as equals, as one people. Say one love, say one love, say one love, one love. God bless y'all. Thank you everybody for a wonderful evening. Please join us for the afterglow up on the second and third floor so we can continue with this celebration and congratulate all of our honorees. Leave it, when you leave out tonight, make sure you keep it on 950 WWJ's Traffic and Weather on 8th. I'm Lloyd Jackson. Have a good night.